material to cover and so that we can let you folks get back to the good work you're doing we'll go ahead and get started uh, before we proceed could you please just type yes in the chat box if you can hear me okay I, I do read yes 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 perfect so it's seems like sounds like good everybody can hear me country you're joining us from welcome to the webinar on leadership assessment and development in the GCC a web-based online session arranged by Medina Institute of Leadership and Entrepreneurship MILE we're glad you joined us today I am Ali Jafri representing MILE and will be moderating this webinar today I think I have corresponded with most of you who have joined uh, over the over the email. I'm going to give a quick overview of Mile and the speaker and also walk through some housekeeping items. Then I'll turn it over to our featured presenter, Dr. David Jackson, who will start the presentation. We are webcasting today from United States of America and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A brief introduction about Mile. The Medina Institute of Leadership and Entrepreneurship MILE brings senior executives and high potential leaders from all over the world to discover new dimensions in leadership and management practices and help them grow in their business careers. We offer participants in our programs priceless engagements with the world's most influential academic and business leaders on a range of critical management and leadership issues. We empower them with the desired leadership skills to help successfully transform their organizations and reach their personal goals. We are thankful to Dr. David Jackson who has given us some time today and will be presenting his views shortly. You will also be able to download a copy of his presentation in PDF or PowerPoint format through our blog post webinar. However, we would request that you please hold your questions until the end of his presentation. Uh, introduction about Dr. David Jackson. Dr. David Jackson works with global companies and nonprofit organizations to improve leadership performance and drive results. As a partner with Oliver Weidman Leadership Development, he collaborates with clients in leading edge executive education and development, working along the full value chain of organizational learning, from needs assessment to design to delivery to measurement. Dr. Jackson also serves as an executive coach and has a deep background in change management, organizational culture, and workforce engagement. Prior to Oliver Weidman, Dr. Jackson served for many years as a worldwide partner at Mercer the preeminent global HR consultancy. At Mercer, Dr. Jackson specialized in connecting executive learning programs to ongoing leadership performance, change management, and rewards processes to ensure that improved performance is sustainable and a key driver, key driver of measurable business outcomes. He has led many assignments in Asia, the Middle East, and the UK, and Europe, developing a deep expertise in the interplay of different regional and corporate cultures during times of transformative change. A little brief housekeeping items now. If you are having trouble with the webinar software, I would, uh, would advise you may please log out and then log in again in case if you are unable to hear us. For some reasons, during the webinar session, if you get dismissed out or kicked off at any time, uh, again, just please reconnect using the instructions sent via email. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Dr. David Jackson. Um, I would have to convert him into a presenter so if you can just hold with us just a second hello everybody it's David Jackson here from Oliver Wyman uh, thank you very much uh, for that kind introduction Ali it's a great pleasure to be with you uh, for this for this webinar um, Ali, I'm not seeing my okay. slides on the, on the screen. Uh, okay, it's it's coming now, sir. Um, we are actually seeing the slides say uh, reading Zaid University, so you might have to run it into a slideshow mode of your PowerPoint. Okay. So will I be running it uh, for the webinar or just for my own? Yes. Yeah. No, no. You are you are you are now live, so you are running for the webinar. Your desktop has been shared with everyone now. I see. Okay. So I'll go back to the first page. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so as 
Ali has said. I, I have a slide up now which has a picture of myself and says a little bit about my background. The only thing I would add uh, to what Ali has said is that I am the Middle East Regional Market Lead for Oliver Wyoming Leadership Developments. I've had the privilege and the pleasure of leading many assignments uh, in uh, and around the GCC, and so do bring that first-hand experience uh, uh, to the, the presentation I'll be making this morning. I'm excited to present a number of slides with some, uh, I hope, very interesting contents to you, and, and I know we want to hold at least half the time for the webinar for Q&A and for discussion, which I look forward to very, very much. So moving to the next slide, uh, the objectives you see here on slide two uh, are uh, the objectives that we'll uh, begin addressing in the webinar and get into in much more detail at the Palm Tree Conference uh, in Medina later this month, uh, where I'll be presenting with my friend and colleague, uh, Mr. Bill Birkin of Oliver Wyoming Leadership Development, a colleague uh, based in London, but who has uh, done quite a bit of work in the region. So those are the very broad uh, sorts of topics uh, that we'll be uh, covering. Uh, the, the next slide um, gives a sense of some of the intellectual capital that is informing uh, our discussion this morning and that will inform uh, the, the Palm 3 session uh, I'll be leading. Um, the essential framework is Head, Heart, and Guts, which is a research-based uh, proprietary leadership model uh, that Oliver Wyman have developed and have been a uh, been applying uh, throughout the region and throughout the world for several years now. Uh, and in addition uh, to this broad uh, leadership framework, uh, which I'll go into in some detail uh, here in our webinar, there are a number of uh, very important uh, articles and pieces of research uh, into topics like leadership brand uh, and um, how to be a globally savvy leader that I'll be touching on as well. Uh, there are uh, PDF versions of articles and research reports addressing all of these sub-bullets. And uh, I know that Ali mentioned that you'll have the presentation in PDF form. We're certainly happy to share as much additional and complementary intellectual capital as anyone would like because we bring uh, great passion and great collegial interest to discussions like these uh, with people like yourselves uh, who are senior and experienced in the whole field of leadership development. From our perspective, sharing intellectual capital uh, is a way to have a dialogue uh, from which we learn uh, generally as much as uh, the organizations uh, with whom we work and with whom we network. So uh, it's very exciting for me to have this time uh, with you today. Dr. Jackson, just to interrupt you for a second, audience, uh, just for clarity purpose, could you just type yes again if you can hear him clearly? Just type yes in the chat box. Just want to make sure since I can write them. Okay. Thank you for that check, Ali, and I yeah. hope people can hear me. I hope yeah. Else is okay. Just Fine. I just had one person who said no, but uh, the remaining everybody is saying yes. So I will keep the interaction private with the person who is having trouble. So you may proceed, sir. I mean, everybody can hear you. Clearly. Okay. Thank you very much, and and okay. do let me know if you'd like me to uh, okay. to speak up or speak more slowly okay. or. Or, I think it's it loud. Everybody is writing yes in the chat box, so I'm glad that they can hear you. So, you, so you please. Great. Thank you very much. So, this topic of the topic of leadership, of course, is an important topic. It's a very big topic, and it's a topic of great interest to anybody who would be on a webinar like this one. I'm on slide five now of my presentation, uh, which is uh, titled "Leadership Brand." And before getting into the research we've done and uh, the applied practice that we have seen around best practice leadership, I just want to make the point that leadership is a very uh, individual matter. It's a very personal matter. Everybody on this webinar, webinar and everybody uh, with a leadership role in an organization has a reputation as a leader. Uh, and uh, that is well known to the people who work with you. And it should be well known to you. However, uh, interesting, interestingly enough, uh, in some cases, uh, people are not entirely uh, aware or self-aware of the leadership brand that they have built, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally. And so uh, the point uh, made by this slide is that the uh, dimensions of uh, a person's leadership brand are three in number. 
uh, the, the first dimension and the first attribute of your leadership brand is your actions and behaviors. So what you do, how you actually spend your time, the sorts of tasks you do as a leader, um, how much time you communicate with your employees, how much energy you devote uh, to motivating and inspiring them, etc. The second attribute of one's leadership brand is knowledge and skills. So in addition to what you do, well, what do you know? What's your area of expertise? What are you a specialist in? That's a very important dimension of leadership as well. And then finally, personal attributes. Who do you fundamentally are? What are your beliefs and your values as a person who is in a leadership position? And you'll see on the bottom half of the slide, there's an exercise I would, I would invite you to think about doing, either now or later, uh, where you would write down how you intend to manage your leadership brand. So what actions do you want to be performing, and do you want people to see you as performing as a leader? And what knowledge do you intend to convey, and do you want people to see and to associate with you? And what beliefs and values do you hold dear, and do you want people to associate with you? And if you were to write down the answers to those questions, uh, then you would have a profile of your intended personal leadership brand. That is to say how you want to come across to others and the value you want others to receive from being led by you. Uh, there's a very interesting article a couple of years ago in the Harvard Business Review, Why Would Anyone Want to Be Led by You? And it's a, it's a very important question for anybody in the leadership role. So I'll say uh, a lot else about leadership, but I want to begin with the point that each of us individually has a reputation as a leader, and it may or may not be accurate in terms of what we really believe and what we're trying to do. And so if you write down the attributes of your leadership brand and do a little bit of a brand audit, ask people how you're coming across, look at 360-degree data if your organization you know, develops uh, that data set. So get some evidence of how you're coming across and be sure that you are presenting strongly as the leader that you want to be along these dimensions. And we'll come back to this notion of personal leadership brand. And by the way, there is some intellectual capital I'd be happy to share that shows uh, for publicly traded organizations that there is a big correlation of overall leadership brand to share price and to the financial and business performance uh, of corporations. And there's also a correlation in the public sector to the achievement of the service mission of your organizations. Okay, I'll move on now to slide six, which presents our model of head, heart, and guts. Several years ago, Oliver Wyman went to The Economist in London, uh, the business publication, and we sat down with their, the global leaders of the Economist Intelligence Unit and said we want to do some research into what makes for the most effective leadership. Leadership that delivers organizational results, leadership that delivers business results, leadership that inspires and motivates people. And uh, we studied dozens and dozens of organizations, public and private sector, uh, in uh, the Middle East region and elsewhere around the world, and determined through our research that the form of leadership that is most effective and gets the best results is whole leadership. Leadership that includes leading with one's head and leading with one's heart and leading with one's guts. All three, all three are terribly important. So to lead with head, and I'll move to the next slide here, slide seven, means that you are clear and logical and analytical. You where you are weak uh, within this model because what's required is to balance, um, balance the three. So that was my slide seven. Uh, slide eight uh, shows the business value of working as uh, a whole leader. Uh, one who leads with head and heart and guts, uh, you will uh, increase, um, you'll be successful in your comp competitor sets, whatever form that takes. 
you'll be able to uh, address rapidly changing market conditions, the need to innovate, and very importantly, to meet customer expectations. So that, that really is the business rationale for this approach to head the hearts uh, and guts. Uh, the next slide uh, shows uh, some research uh, that was recently done at the Zayed University in the UAE uh, with uh, leaders and uh, people who work with them in organizations in Qatar uh, uh, as well as in the UAE. Uh, and this, of course, does not represent all of the countries and all the economies in the Gulf region, but it is some very current uh, and unfolding research I wanted to share with you. Uh, and th these are the, attribute, the top attributes of effective leadership according to leaders and uh, followers uh, within Qatari and Emirati organizations. So it's interesting to note uh, that the, the research shows that what is most valued uh, in uh, Qatari organizations is trust, followed by team-oriented, and then there was actually an eight to what way tie for number three. Communication, honesty, problem solving, vision, planning, listening, decision making, visionary, and objective driven. But it's quite interesting that the two top uh, components are trust and team oriented. And the observation there is that those are the attributes of heart leadership. And as you move down the list still, uh, you know, to the top ten, you get to aspects of head leadership, such as planner and visionary, and aspect of guts leadership, for example, decision making. So compared to that, the results uh, from the Emirati uh, leaders and followers who uh, contributed to this research project, again, it's very recent, uh, and number one was friendliness, and number two was follow-up. Uh, and then honesty, team worker, patience, communication, and you can see the rest of the list there. So uh, again, the observation is friendliness is a heart attribute. Uh, Follow-up is more of a head attribute. And so what we see in these two lists is the really the beginning of a thought process about how to uh, define the kind of leadership brand uh, that is sought uh, within organizations uh, in Qatar and the UAE. Uh, now, this is early research, and I'm not claiming that it's definitive, but it's fresh research, and it gives you an interesting perspective. Um, when I have done this kind of research, say, in Germany, uh, all of the top attributes are around head with some guts. When I have done this research in Brazil, I was just in Sao Paulo, uh, there is a huge focus on heart leadership. So it is interesting that the historical cultures and the social norms in different parts of the world frame how people want to be led and influence the leadership brand people intend to present. So there's very important regional diversity but more importantly, every place we have done this research, we have discovered that it, it, what is required is a blend of head and heart and guts. Let me pause there and just ask, uh, is that, am I uh, audible? Can people hear me? Uh, audience okay, I'll assume that's... Yes, is that okay, Ali? It seems to be okay. Uh, we are okay. hearing yes, 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 so I guess you can continue. There's Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And again, I apologize for the technical uh, snafus. In a way, it's almost miraculous that we're able to do this in so many different countries and so many different times. Uh, my next slide, slide 10, makes the point that we live and we lead in a complex, diverse, and uncertain world. I have found in my 10 years of coming uh, to the Gulf region and working with public and private sector organizations that every year I come there is more and more of a sense of being plugged into the global economy and the global business culture. I also find that, for instance, in China where I've been uh, going to work for over 10 years uh, and Again, every time that I come, there is more of a 
sense that we're part of an interconnected world. And so the complexity, diversity, uncertainty of the global world in which we play affects everybody. And that's really the point of that slide. Um, the next slide, I would just like to suggest to you that uh, managing um, locally, as, as we do, uh, as leaders of GCC organizations, uh, means managing against the backdrop of what is global. And it's important to balance the local and the global. Uh, and there are times when there can be a tension, a, a perceived tension between the two. Uh, and we would call that a paradox. And paradox is the kind of thing that, oh, 20 or 30 years ago, leaders didn't worry about. Nowadays, everyone's concerned with paradox because managing paradox is how we manage through complexity. This is a slide I'll be going through in much more detail uh, in Medina later this month, but it simply makes the point that there is a value to leading with a local emphasis, for instance, client responsiveness, etc. And there can be a concern in overemphasizing a local management focus. That is to say, you might lack global strategy, global brands can be diluted. And so some organizations, when they perceive the, the uh, weaknesses of a local focus, will overcompensate and go over to the global emphasis and say, well, we're going to do global sourcing and economies of scale. And I do see more and more GCC organizations really um, digging very deeply into global value and supply chains and, and global talent management ideas, etc. But if you go too global, global, then you uh, discover the concerns of overemphasizing the global, which is you can alienate and lose entrepreneurship and the local awareness and support. And so the point of this slide is the importance of balancing local and global, doing the two things at the same time, which is very hard to do and can only be done really by leaders who lead with head and heart and guts and base their personal brand on that. Um, the uh, next slide, slide 12, shows uh, all of the dimensions of uh, working across borders and across cultures and uh, the different forms that diversity takes. We have different religions at play. Uh, Islam uh, in the Gulf region, uh, Christianity prevalent, say, in the Americas. Uh, Buddhism and Hinduism prevalent in other parts of the world, India and China, etc. And of course there are big economies where religion is not prevalent at all. So there's religious diversity. There's diversity of gender and age. Uh, in some countries there are many more women in leadership roles than others. In some countries very few women. Uh, there is diversity in experience and thinking style. And all of these areas of diversity need to be carefully managed, need to be managed with and managed through to fulfill your business mission and to add value as a leader. Um, I think I'm going to go past slides 13 and 14 because I do want to leave time for questions and answers and we, we only have 15 minutes left. Uh, and there is intellectual capital behind slides 13 and 14 that I'm happy to share uh, after the call in PDFs. And, and just to look at slide 15 and to make the point that leaders uh, lead uh, up teams. Leaders really lead three things. A leader leads himself. A leader leads his team. And a leader leads his organization. And you must start with, with, with uh, management of self, leadership of self, and that's the point of understanding uh, your personal brand and how it's coming across. But the first big applied dimension of leadership is, is leadership of team. And the more um, aware you are of your strengths and weaknesses in terms of head, heart, and guts, the more sensitive you are to the cultural requirements of those that you will lead, for instance, the Zayed University research I shared with you for the for Qatar and the Emirates, then the faster you will move your team through this um, continuum of forming, storming, 
norming, performing, and I'll bet you've heard those uh, four terms, and we would add to them conforming and then transforming. So uh, there is so much change in the world now, so much change in our organizations that it's critical for us as leaders to be change leaders, and we will get there faster and with higher performance if we uh, act as uh, as change, as, as whole leaders. We will also manage our careers more effectively, which is the point of slide 16. Wherever you are personally along this leadership pipeline model, you will need to go through a passage to get to the next level. And everything that I have shared today will help you and help your organizations manage those passages successfully so that people will move on to the next level and be very effective performing at that higher level. So I'll conclude where I began, which is this notion of leadership brand. Who are you and what do you stand for as a leader? Be very conscious of that, I would advise, and start a process of becoming more aware and managing your brand so that you can add the greatest value to your organization and, frankly, be the most fulfilled person that you can be in your work life and your leadership role. With that, Ali, I will uh, close my comments, apologize again for our technical problems, and open up for any uh, questions or comments. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jackson. Uh, or audience, uh, you're open for the questions. Uh, so please, if you have any questions, uh, you can raise your hand. There's an icon uh, on your webinar control panel, which you can click on to be able to give each other a question. Maybe we have a question or hands been raised. Just a second. Uh, Yusuf Al Sufiani, could you please introduce yourself and uh, be free to ask a question to Dr. Jackson? Yeah. Yes, I, I, I can hear you. You're a little faint, but I can hear you. Well, uh, thank you very much. It was, it's an excellent presentation. It's very useful. Uh, useful, Sofiani. I'm a um, uh, digital marketing uh, consultant for WSI, a franchisee owner here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, basically, my question here is that uh, what's the takeaway from this presentation, if you can explain it in a nutshell, vis-a-vis the leadership and the contribution to the, um, the organization bottom line. Uh, uh, if we would have to you know, summarize it in, in, in a nutshell, uh, uh, can, we, can we get the takeaway out of this uh, whole presentation? Sure, thank you. That's a great question, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, in a nutshell, it is that uh, leaders should lead uh, not only with their head, but they should balance uh, leadership behaviors uh, of leading with head and heart and guts. And if they do that, then you will get uh, much better organizational results. So however you measure, whether it's business results or public sector results, whatever results you're accountable for as a leader, you will get them faster and you will get uh, better results if you, uh, if you determine what your leadership style is. Maybe it's mostly head, maybe it's mostly guts, whatever. And then strengthen those areas where you're not uh, as strong. So if you're, say, a head and a guts leader, to strengthen your heart leadership skills. And if you do that, then you will deliver much better results to your organization, and you'll have a more successful career. In a nutshell, that's it. And thank you so much for that question. Uh, Mr. Al Sufiani, oh, um, thank you very much. Supplementary question, or okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we move. Thank you, Mom. We move to the next question, uh, Mr. Let me unmute you, Mr. Faisal Al Maudi. Mr. Faisal, can you hear us? Could you please introduce yourself and feel free to ask a question? Faisal, can you hear us? Mm, okay, he is commenting now. I'm without a mic. Just a sec. Okay, he has rather typed his question. Okay, the question is, a new leadership supervisor, I should focus on all number three basic types of leadership attributes 
then to advance these attitudes? Uh, Dr. Jackson, I'm not sure. Yes, it is important. Uh, it's a great question. Thank you again. It is important to focus on all three. Um, and it's important also to be very uh, precise in your understanding of your strengths and weaknesses. And so uh, that is why I recommended that you do an audit of your leadership brands and learn by talking to your colleagues uh, how you are coming across, whether as head or heart or guts or some combination, so you will know where to uh, become more skilled. So the people coming to the Palm Conference are actually filling out a, uh, a professional self-assessment. They will give them this, a specific data. And um, that's a good thing to do, but it's also possible uh, to uh, gather the data that you have through any 360-degree review processes you may have been through or just through talking with your colleagues. And so the answer to your question is yes, it's important to be strong in all three styles of leadership, and it's also important to determine where your weaknesses are in a pretty accurate, thoughtful way so that you will improve your leadership uh, intentionally and with good results. Oh, thank you very much. Um, audience, any other questions? Please feel free to raise your hand. We have a number of attendees today. If you, okay, you can also feel free to put your thoughts in the chat box and I'll be happy to read them more. Um, okay, we have one question from Mr. Faisal Tahir Khan who has put in a chat box. How, do, how leaders can manage challenge management issues? as usually bringing new changes and difficult in GCC? It's a wonderful point, um, and it's a question uh, uh, that is very important in the GCC where there are many challenging leadership issues. I'm not sure what you have in mind by challenges, but one thing I have seen is more expatriates uh, coming into the GGC, GCC region and leaders looking at the people they manage and seeing not only uh, Emirati or Saudi or Qatari uh, followers, but people from other countries uh, throughout the Islamic world and, and people from uh, the, the States and Europe. And that's, that's one kind of challenge. Of course, there are many other challenges uh, that uh, people are, are really uh, working very hard on in the G GCC these days. I think um, it's terribly important to know how stress affects you because challenges lead to stress. And when a leader is under stress, he is not the most effective leader that he can be. And so in addition to the slides I covered, I would encourage you to, to reflect on how you behave when you are under a great deal of stress. And this is sometimes called uh, a person's derailer. So much as a train, he can be derailed from the train tracks. So a person, so a leader, can be der derailed from their effectiveness. Uh, and I would just, um, again, encourage you to talk to your colleagues and say, well, when I am under a lot of stress, how do I behave? So that you uh, will not have those behaviors derail your effectiveness as a leader when you're in challenging times. I think that's the big issue. It's not how do you manage a bottom line or how do you manage the technical work of people because you are probably very, very uh, good at the technical side of leadership and management. Uh, most people are around the world. What I have seen particularly in the Gulf is that people are strong technically and where they have a chance to grow as leaders is by being more aware of their derailers and managing their personal leadership style more effectively. So thank you for that for that very helpful question. Thank you. Uh, we have one another quick question uh, from Hani Baghdadi. She has written uh, having a very strong, very very strong head leadership styles leading the organizations. What will be the best way to deal with him if he's the local leader? It's an excellent point. Um, so if he is uh, very strong at head, uh, then probably uh, he is not as strong at heart. That, that is typically the case. 
And if he's not strong at heart, then what you probably see is employees are not uh, as engaged or inspired as they could be, and therefore not as productive as they could be. So when a leader is very strong at head, the only way to change them is to give them evidence. So what I like to do is to look at the data. What is the evidence that our workforce is not as productive or engaged or motivated as we would like? And then present the evidence to him and say to him, if you keep leading only with head, we will not improve productivity. We will not improve our financial results. And you can show him our article with all of the research that I'm happy to share that, that presents a scientific proof that you must lead with heart as well as head to get full productivity and best business results. I think that is the way to deal with a head leader. Okay, uh, have more questions coming in. Dr. Jackson, there's one. Uh, I believe Mr. Abrad Ahmed has raised his hand. Mr. Ahmed, can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Abrar Ahmed, can you hear us? Yes, I can, absolutely. Uh, Abrar, can, can you ask a question, please? Can you please us all? Hello. Um, I'm afraid Abrar somehow is unable to ask a question. Okay. I think he has typed it rather. <laughs> if there's a guy who's excessively heart oriented and an, and an excessively emotional, is that bad for the business? It, uh, it could be bad for business um, uh, if uh, he doesn't have a colleague who is head oriented. Sometimes a leader who is so heart oriented, uh, they are so heart oriented it's very hard to change and become more head. And in that case it's good to have a COO or a fellow leader who's more head and then you can have the reality of a kind of collective leadership, the two people together representing more of the whole. So it doesn't have to be bad for business if it's compensated for, but it can be. There is a real risk that if you are doing only heart leadership, people will love you and they will feel loyal to you, but they may not produce the best business results. Now, in the Gulf, it is terribly important in the whole GCC region, it's terribly important to have relationships, loyalty, I understand this. I love doing business in your region. And the reason I do is I value the loyalty and the trust and the warm teamwork. It's very appealing to me as a person and I think it makes for great business. So I'm not saying that's bad. And if you look at the Zayed University data, it says that heart leadership is highly valued. Uh, at least in those two business communities. So that's all good. But it could be even better. And my concern is as we globalize, at least some of our businesses based in the GCC, so uh, big companies like Savic and others that are now, you know, NCB is, is, is moving into more of a global posture, and, and so many companies are based in Saudi and elsewhere. Uh, that's my answer to that question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think Abra has supplemented it. What are the damages that a person can create? A little bit of background noise, Ali. Sounds uh, like a machine or something. Uh, can you hear me now, Dr. Jackson? I can. Yes, I can. Okay. I think just to supplement, Abra has uh, uh, written again. What are the damages such a person can create? I'm sorry, I just lost you. A supplementary to the previous question, which Ibrahim Ahmed asked uh, regarding the guy who is excessive, excessively hard oriented and excessively emotional. He has put up a supplementary question asking, what are the damages such a person can create? Uh, one kind of damage is that talented people will not do their very best work because they will uh, only uh, work to maintain their friendly, friendly relationship with the boss. They will not do the additional uh, work of your business or of your uh, 
public sector organization. And so the damage uh, is that you may not achieve the highest results that you want. Maybe things will be OK, and you'll keep moving along. But uh, the risk is that you won't uh, achieve the kinds of results that are important to be competitive, uh, both regionally and, and also globally. OK. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can perhaps um, extend the webinar for another five, six minutes. Uh, Dr. Jackson, is it fine? Because we have a couple of more questions popping in. That's just fine. OK. Um, I think uh, there's another one uh, from Zafir Shehri. Uh, it's written, uh, do all business chains will need head, heart, and gut? Like production stage will need more focus in day-to-day -day rather than strategic? I'm sorry, could you just one more time, Ali? Okay, the question is from Zafir Shehri. Um, she's asked, uh, or he's asked, do all business chain will need head, heart, and gut? Like production stage will need more focus in day-to-day -day rather than strategic? Yes, that's a, that's a really good question. Thank you for that question. So uh, at different um, points in the business cycle, and at different stages in an organization's growth, there might be more need uh, for one or the other. So if it's the time to build a business plan, you have to size head. If it's the time to recruit a lot of new people, uh, and you can't succeed without a lot of new people, then you need to emphasize heart, because that's what attracts people to your organization. If it's the time uh, to uh, compete uh, in a very tough environment and make hard decisions, uh, then it's important to emphasize guts. I think it's a good question, though, because if you're in a production role, then production really requires excellent work in the head zone completely. I agree with that. The only thing I would add is you can't only lead with your head without risking, uh, you know, uh, that your employees might become disengaged. Even production workers uh, like to have that sense of affiliation and loyalty to their organization. OK, uh, here we have another one. Um, how the team will be fast performing with current virtual organization and global different nationalities? Well, uh, most organizations are virtual now, and most are becoming more global. Uh, so to be high performing, you, you still need to apply the model of whole leadership, but you need to be very uh, creative and resourceful about how to do it. So you can lead with the heart face to face in a meeting with somebody. You can also lead with your heart uh, via video conference or web chats or social media. A lot of ways to do that. Um, you can lead with your guts uh, within a given uh, culture, uh, but you may also need to adapt that for different cultures. Uh, so take, uh, for example, the United States, where I am from, the business culture uh, is a gutsy culture, particularly in our financial services sector. Um, and maybe that hasn't been such a good thing for the global economy in recent years. <laughs> but um, you do have a lot of people on Wall Street who lead entirely with their guts. And, and as their companies take on workers in uh, Europe, in the Middle East, in India, and in East Asia, then uh, let's call it an American style of guts leadership needs to be adapted, needs to be adjusted uh, for other countries. I have found uh, working uh, in the uh, GCC uh, some leaders who are very uh, loyal to their people and, and very determined to have a, a warm human connection. I, and I'm talking about some leaders, not all. Uh, but then as you bring in uh, expatriates to work for you, um, you need to be sure that they take that as strength, not weakness. I'm being very blunt about this because I have sometimes seen um, leaders uh, from uh, the Arab world, uh, people who are uh, older people like myself, or, or much younger people, and uh, lead uh, with the heart 
and have, say, Western workers misinterpret that as weakness, not strength, which is what it is. And sometimes it, it, it's, it's hard work to get everybody on the same page. And sometimes you need to overreact a bit to come across as a tougher leader, which can then confuse your national employees. So it's a tricky challenge adapting these leadership principles uh, to different, um, different cultures and uh, different stages of an organization. Thank, thank you for a great question. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Shaykh. And another one quickly from Muhammad Davas, who is a corporate marketing supervisor at Al-Akaria. Al it's written, can a department such as marketing and sales lead the company? And then if yes, what is the way forward? I think it depends upon the business plan. If the business plan requires a lot of revenue growth, then it's critical for sales and marketing to be at the very forefront of corporate leadership. Um, and uh, even if it's even if you are not trying to grow your top line, so to speak, um, I think sales and marketing have a huge amount to contribute to overall corporate success. And I would think about the concept of branding. I think the brand. Uh, that is to say the attributes uh, of the organization, its value proposition. In a way, that's what matters most in this global economy that we're all in. And so I think it's important for sales and marketing to have a seat at the table, not to come afterwards, but to be right there with the CEO and with the executives as they are forming strategy, and to be sure that um, the customer perspective is present. Uh, and I'll just close with this thought uh, to this excellent question. One way of thinking about the great value of uh, sales and marketing is most organizations want to become more customer-centric, and nobody understands the customer better than people in sales and marketing. It's not finance. It's not legal. It's sales and marketing who understands the customer. Okay. Uh, Jackson, Jackson, um I also have one question, rather a philosophical question regarding leadership, just to curious, uh, but curious about sh should the leaders, I mean you mentioned about the brand, leadership brand, and once they're clear about what do they stand for, should as a leader, should they be worried about producing followers or producing leaders within the team? That is a philosophical question, Ali, and it's a very intriguing one. Mm -hmm. I believe that leadership is something that can and should occur at all levels of the organization. So even the person working in the mailroom or the canteen uh, can choose uh, to lead himself mm -hmm. and to lead by example those around him and to inspire those above him. So I do think uh, that leadership uh, is uh, something that should be prevalence throughout the organization and in a way that every single human being is a leader or can take on leadership attributes. Now having said that, uh, in addition to that point, there are people at the top who are charged with making the big decisions and directing the organization. Mm -hmm. And I think for those folks it is important to look at the whole workforce and say, how do I inspire followership? that is productive. Not followership that is meek and takes orders unquestioningly, but followership that owns with me as the leader the results in the process. Because uh, if you have meek followers who just do whatever you say and don't ever ask a question, then you're not really tapping into the human capital of your organization and you won't be innovative. Now, I, I have worked with some executives in the GCC who are very accustomed to being authoritative and strong and making a decision, and they expect people to follow. Well, that's good, but it's not sufficient. What's required is to open yourself to the innovative ideas, maybe even of that person in the mailroom who might have been thinking, I have a better idea for how to do something. So I, th I think... I think it's both, Ali. I think it's leadership across the organization, but also those at the top inspiring the best kind of followership. 
I agree with you. Thank you very much. It's about indeed inspiring people in the organization. Uh, Dr. Jackson, you're also receiving some comments. Uh, there are attendees who are requesting if you could also refer some books regarding head, heart, and guts. Uh, maybe, I mean, you can email to us and at post-webinar we can upload it in, in, a, in the blog with your recorded version and presentation knowledge back. Uh, oh, sure, I'd be delighted. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll happily do that, Ali, of course. Cindy, I think uh, there are a few more questions, but I, I'm afraid we are running out of the time. We have to wind it up now, but this recording version will be uploaded on our blog, and I will be emailing you all the links, so you can always feel free to post your comments and questions in the remarks section. Uh, well, that sort of ends our webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. David Jackson, for your time and willingness to share your information and experiences. Uh, also, thank to all of you who participated, uh, we are glad you could join us and hope the session was helpful for you. As I mentioned, I will be emailing you the link to a recorded version of this webinar in a couple of days once we are uploading it on our blog. I will also be distributing to you by email an online evaluation form for this webinar. Uh, this will give you a chance to evaluate this session and also suggest additional topics for which you would like to participate in online webinars in the future. Your feedback is very valuable to us, so please do take five minutes of your time to complete the survey when it lands in your inbox. Just a reminder note that tomorrow we are also conducting another webinar on competing through business models by Dr. Raymond Kassadisis of Harvard Business School. Uh, the details of the program of the webinar is available on our website. Um, we, uh, there are other high-impact programs on high-performance governments, SPG, and Program for Advanced Leadership Management, Palm 3, are also going to be held in this month. Dr. David Jackson is our featured speaker for the Palm program, so I hope you will be able to get the details from our website, www.mile.org. www.mile.org. Finally, please, uh, uh, please note that we are available for any additional technical support after this webinar. Feel free to contact me by phone or email if you can be of any additional assistance. And once again, thank you all for joining, and you all have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. I will be logging off, so you all will be automatically logged off from the session. Thank you very much.